Hi, hello to you. Stick number one, <laughs> stick number two. Those two sticks sewed together cost $150, and this represents the new generation of the NVIDIA Shield TV, which is the ultra popular Android TV box, which probably is the most popular on the market right now. It's always been. Well, in this video, we're going to find out whether it is a worthy upgrade to the previous generation and what this fabulous Android TV stick can do for $150. Let's get started. Hi everybody, welcome back. My name is Michael and that's the Tech for All channel, the place where we inspect cool tech and you know, I very often do reviews of Android TV boxes on the channel and if there's something that we can say about it's top of the pop or best of the best, that certainly is the Nvidia Shield TV, which has been renewed back in 2019, which was just a few weeks ago, and it now has more power, more features, and apparently the normal version has a very, very weird form factor. If you've never used an Android TV box before, well, let me flush out what the term means. Basically, you use your TV as a screen and you use the computing power, which is over here. So, some use cases, you can use it as Chromecast, you can use it for playback of various videos, you can use it for access to local storage, you can use it for Amazon Prime Video, YouTube, anything that your smartphone is capable of, okay, almost anything, would be possible to be done using the NVIDIA Shield TV. It's always been a pricey product. At the moment, that's the normal version, which costs around $150 with just this remote. And I say with just this remote because people are usually kind of used to buying the Shield TV with a joystick. The first Shield TV was released back in 2015. And two years later, there was a slight upgrade and refresh of the product line. And one of the things it kept is the high price. It still costs a lot. For example, it's almost three times more expensive than the famous Mi Box S by Xiaomi, but it also is way more capable than that. Keep in mind, this regular version doesn't come with a gamepad and has certain connectivity limitations that we're going to talk about through the video. And of course, it costs a lot more than the white label Chinese TV box alternatives, where the hardware in some ways could be up to par, but software is certainly falling behind. Pricing and positioning are now clear. Just one more note, do not expect to get super deals about the Shield TV because there rarely are such. Even on Amazon Prime Day or Black Friday, you wouldn't get super discounts, but it is what it is. I guess we should expect more from the hardware and the software. And let's start with unboxing. The package on the outside looks really good and so should be it, because we're talking about the most premium Android TV box out there. You get nice feeling while you're unboxing, and it's a feeling of unboxing something really good. We take out the cardboard, and there's the new tubular design, which is quite unpractical, if you ask me. But let me talk about that in a moment. Here's the power cord, and know that this is not an adapter, meaning that the conversion to the lower voltage happens inside the Shield TV device meaning that the adapter is physically inside it. And in fact, that's a good idea because it lets you use slim power connectors and hiding behind the TV is theoretically better. Here are the available ports and buttons. Not sure why I'm talking in plural form, because there's an HDMI, the micro SD slot, and on the other side, the power connector, as well as an RJ45 port. There is not a single USB port, which is, in my opinion, the greatest drawback so far. Guess Nvidia didn't want to cannibalize the sales of the Pro model. Setup was extremely easy. You need the power, you need to connect to the TV via HDMI, turn everything on and we're ready to rock. A few words about what is inside. The latest and greatest Tegra X1 processor, which has the unique 256 core Nvidia GPU. And that's accompanied by two gigs of RAM. The amount of RAM sounds ridiculous, especially if we put it side by side with nowadays flagships like uh, OnePlus, Samsung and so many devices which already have 8, 10, even 12 gigs of RAM. And over here we have just two. And like comparing it with a $40 costing Chinese white label product, which has 
like four gigs of RAM and you would wonder why. Um, if you let me explain just for a few moments, uh, RAM over here we have DDR4 by the way, but RAM doesn't have that much of impact on pure performance. There are two pillars of bringing the good performance with TV boxes. The first one, the CPU, and the second one, that's the embedded storage or the eMMC. If both components are good, your games are going to launch really quick, the apps are going to open much faster, and so on. When it comes to RAM, uh, you're gonna notice that during normal operation, usually you have around one gig of free memory, which is uh, meaning that with the two gigs of RAM, you're gonna be doing just fine. In my opinion, that's gonna be good for at least another two to three years, maybe even more if there are no significant breakthroughs. And uh, for those of you who really want a bit more of RAM, the Pro model has three gigs. Purely in terms of performance, the Tegra X1 Plus has an increase of around 25% compared to the previous generation. And that sounds rather unimpressive, but what makes the difference is NVIDIA's experience with graphics processing and artificial intelligence. The deep learning can offer some remarkable tricks. And probably the most significant add-on for this generation is the so-called AI-enhanced upscaling. Well, in short, most of the content that we play on 4K TVs it's not 4K because even now in 2020, so many people release content in 1080p, even sometimes in just 720p. Some other devices different to the Shield TV already have some software enhancers, and these are mostly a marketing gimmick. But let's take a look at what really happens with the picture using the AI enhanced upscaling. That's a movie which is encoded at 720p, and if you watch it on a large 4K monitor, the colors would look paler, it's gonna be less details, and you know how it feels switching to a lower resolution. If you don't know, while you're watching this particular video, you can find the settings of the playback probably here at the toolbar, or I don't know, depending on the player, it could be somewhere else, but you can switch to a lower resolution, like you can choose 480p or even 360p, and you're gonna see the big difference between now and a downscaled image. The great part is that the AI upscaling can be shown in real time and the processing happens during the playback. Just notice how the AI upscaling immediately increases the sharpness, enhances the colors and you have the feeling that there's more detail. Some people might even be tricked that this is true 1080p footage, well it isn't. It won't work quite well if you do that on very low resolution footage because it's gonna look rather pixelized. The last hardware component to explore is the remote or the kind of mouse. After spending the last six years controlling my Android TV boxes with a gyro-based so-called Air Mouse, I was not very convinced that this little stick is going to be a fully working replacement. Uh, it was more like a psychological barrier, which I'm very happy that I've overcome because based on this last month of usage, there's no way I'm going back to an Air Mouse. This remote is at the same time ergonomic and also well designed and finally there's a thing which wouldn't slip between the sofa pillows. Ever lost a TV remote? Well, it happens to me all the time. And on top of that, this thing is powered by AA batteries and conveniently there's battery status info visible from the operating system. And there's a very discreet backlight. If you watch a movie, you would be able to recognize each one of these buttons when simply lifting up the remote. The backlight is really discreet and I think it's another area where Nvidia have found the perfect balance. Uh, now you're probably wondering about the software. Well, I'm gonna stay away from mentioning exact Android versions because I'm not sure when you're going to watch this video. But one thing I know for sure, and that's that Nvidia are really good at maintaining their software for a very long period of time. Apparently, you could expect regular software updates. Generally, there's nothing too much to improve on Android TV these days, except the security patch level. The default launcher is also fine, it's well tuned to inspire you to consume more content, and if you prefer something more minimalistic and tidier, and highly configurable, Here's TV Launcher 3, which can easily be installed. And generously, NVIDIA are not locking us to use their default launcher, as it is with some other TV boxes. The menus are countless. Everything can be fine-tuned. Video codecs are well-supported. 
No need to mention that there's integration on hardware level of H.265 and VP9 playback. And the audio is even more fascinating. Dolby Digital, Dolby Atmos, DTS X Surround, DTS HD Pass-Through. You're well equipped to connect to various devices. Whether it's gonna be to the soundbar or to random speakers, it is gonna work. The settings menu is always available and it's just a tap away. No need to mention that the box has all the needed certifications. So Netflix and Amazon Prime Video will run in 4K, YouTube of course too. What is truly inspiring is gameplay. Real Racing loads between 3 and 4 times faster compared to my old TV box, which was powered by the famous AM Logic S912 CPU, and I can enjoy now buttery smooth 60 FPS gameplay. It's amazing. All the games from Play Store will run fine. Those of them which are not on Google's Play Store, you can sideload. And because this is coming from NVIDIA, it supports GeForce Now, which enables you to play games on multiple devices via just a single account. And you can of course install third-party apps. One of the options is to use a good file manager, like FX File Explorer or Solid Explorer. And you can pre-download the APKs on a microSD card. Or if you have a home network, you can use the shared folder or a NAS device. To me, the transition was pretty simple because I have a NAS and it is all very quickly accessible. No software bugs, no freezes, no incompatibilities. If you want to add a Bluetooth device, it takes a few seconds. The cast function also works seamlessly, and this is another beauty of Android TV. You can cast your favorite video or music or photo as long as you're connected to the same network where Shield TV is residing. Having said all that, it's time for a summary. And I, I still cannot make up my mind whether it's a TV box which is worth the money. Well, if you're gonna play games, then definitely this is the TV box you might wanna get. But if you don't care about games, there are cheaper solutions. The white label solutions, the Mi Box S, which has all the necessary certifications to play uh, YouTube, Netflix and Amazon Prime Video in 4K. But again, for gaming, there's nothing better than the Shields TV. And I can probably criticize this form factor, which at the moment looks good. This tube form is, is fine, but when you add the cables from both sides, looks a kind of weird. Also, if you already have a Shield TV, I think upgrading is questionable because in terms of performance, it's just 25%. Yes, the AI upscaling, but the rest is pretty much the same. And you're probably going to lose a USB port. But if you don't care about USB ports and you want the best Android TV box for gaming out there, that certainly is the Nvidia Shield TV especially paired with a gamepad, which costs extra money. Well, apparently if you have 150 bucks to spend and you want a best on the market, I'm currently holding it in my hands. Thank you very much for watching this video. It's been a pleasure to have you in the past few minutes. Well, if you liked it, then please support me. There's a thumb up button, the subscribe button, you can share the video with friends, and apparently you can get the Nvidia Shield TV from the links which are shared in the description below the video. For any questions and comments, I'll be looking forward to getting in touch using the corresponding section right below. I'll be keeping an eye on there. Thank you again for being my guests and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.